let's start off with bringing our first guest, uh, Ryan Smith, onto the show. Ryan, welcome to the show. Hey, Michael. Thanks for having us. I'm glad you're here. All right. You've got a really uh, hotbed for a conversation with what's going on in your industry, industry, excuse me, industry. But before we bring that all out, give us a, a background on, on you. Tell us about what LeafLink does. And then I already have a, a zillion questions for you. Sure. Yeah. Happy to get started there. So as you said, my name is Ryan Smith, co-founder, CEO of LeafLink, uh, along with Zach Silverman, who's our CTO, uh, my co-founder. We each had no experience in the cannabis space, but knew a lot about enterprise software, marketplace, B2B marketplace technology. And we began doing research and meeting with leading companies in the industry to realize there was a, a very clear need for a powerful commerce tool to allow businesses, licensed businesses in each state to buy and, buy and sell wholesale inventory from each other. So we built LeafLink to be exactly that, uh, an online marketplace now with over 1,800 dispensaries, 450 brands across six states. Okay. All right. Now, a uh, company recently raised $10 million in funding. And uh, tell us how that's going, what are you using the money for, and uh, where are you going to go next with it? Absolutely. Yeah, the momentum in the space is is clear. I mean, we just saw even last night uh, New Hampshire making mo- motions to legalize in that state. Vermont, people are really excited about Michigan, Ohio, Illinois, New Jersey. And what we've seen that this spark that began on the West Coast with Colorado and California now spreading to so many other states. And so our motivation behind raising the Series A, which is one of the largest rounds that's been raised in the space, was to take our product market fit across the six states where we're currently live and begin scaling that to the new territories where marijuana is legal or at least medically accessible for patients that require it to begin to have process and structure for these companies as they grow themselves from the tech and where we're providing technology, you know, as a back end to what they do. Okay. You know, uh, I've got a co-host here, uh, Ed Baxter, and he's got a bunch of questions for you too, but l- let me start this off. Um, you know, Jeff Sessions recently created a lot of controversy. It's not going to be the whole part of the conversation, but I want you to address that. What's going on with him saying, all right, everybody, everything you've been doing now, no, you can't. What, 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 how, how is the industry dealing with that? It's, it is, it's very interesting. The timing is interesting as well, right? I mean, to, within 100 hours of the largest, most you know, populous state in the country going recreation illegal to make a statement like, like the one he did. Uh, so a few points to note, right? It's obviously not a, a positive, um, but the cat really, we do feel like, is out of the bag on the industry already. There are states like Colorado balancing their public school budgets with tax revenue from, from cannabis firms. And his statement was really rescinding something that was not law, the coal memorandum. It was not, you know, it was, it was advertised regularly in both the media and even in the industry as this protection for the cannabis industry, when really it wasn't. It was just a guidance that there are higher priorities for the DOJ than addressing cannabis, particularly cannabis companies that are following state regulations. And then what Jeff Sessions came out and said was, well, I'm updating that and I'm saying that now it's all up to the discretion of these local Department of Justice um, DAs. And what we've seen in the last week since that announcement was made, a little less than a week, is that the, that the DOJ team members, DAs in each of the states where it's been legalized have said we're, we're effectively staying the course, right? The will of the people is clear. There's nothing that Americans tend to majority agree on, it seems like nowadays. And this is one of those things, right? 51% of Senate Republicans agree almost 70% of the general populace agrees that marijuana and ca- cannabis should be legalized. Um, and so it's, we see it and think the industry sees it as his statement and what he's always said in the past, right? He does not support uh, cannabis access on any level. And this, we think, is his attempt at trying to you know, slow the roll on the momentum that's happening in, in the industry right now. Okay, so really, it's it's going to be a lot of bluster, but th- there's not going to be a whole lot of bite to it when it comes down to the bottom line. It's too integrated something already. Something, yeah, something interesting too. I mean, you think about you know federal subsidies are down. States have to come up with capital somewhere to, to support a lot of the programs that run. And we think, I mean, for us, we're not a cannabis company right? we're a technology company. We don't buy, grow, or sell any product, but. We speak to people every day who do, and for all of them, I mean, their bets are placed, right? They believe in the industry. They know the power of the product. It has market acceptance. 
and it provides a lot of value to a lot of people's lives as patients, and that's not something that people are going to walk away from easily. All right, let's move into the technology side, the B2B e-commerce and cannabis. Um, walk us through what's going on there and where it's going to end up with with what LeafLink is uh, is doing to, to be a disruptive force in the industry sector. Sure. Every startup always talks about disrupting something that exists, like industries that have these preconceived notions of how the supply chain is supposed to operate or business is supposed to go every day. Uh, what we think is particularly interesting about this industry is it's coming – of age now at a time when there's no, all these technological luxuries are here for them to use in the very beginning. And so instead of disrupting it, we really can define the space from the very beginning, have a tech first uh, supply chain or a tech first backbone to how the supply chain operates. And so for us at Leafly, what we're doing is learning as much as we can and building a system around both the current needs of our clients today and where we believe based on other industries, the industry is going. And everyone listening to this uh, show and everyone on this call, right, where we use B2C e-commerce platforms all the time. B2B really still has a long way to go, and we think cannabis is a perfect place to start because it's really progressive, open-minded, forward-moving <clears throat> people in the industry, and using this technology to run their businesses is is part of the reason we've had so much traction uh, in the last 18 months, two years. How are you staying ahead of anybody else that wants to compete with you? Execution is the number one thing, right? So we're opening up in new states now. It's one of our main goals, opening in 10 new states this year. Raising capital, being at the forefront of the, the largest capital raise in the industry is very important, too, so we could properly support and serve our clients. Um, and the other, I mean, the other thing is that we're focused, right? There's a lot of companies trying to do 10 different things, and they ultimately end up doing, this is a classic startup mistake, but we see it a lot in this industry. They ultimately end up doing not very much at all. We know what, what value we provide. We want to further that, grow on that at the core of our of our offering, and those are the three things that really make us different. Last, less than 30 seconds to go. Horizon for the industry 2018, what's on it? There's going to be at least another half dozen states that if they don't go legal this year, we'll put paperwork together to begin that process. And states are now perfecting and have perfected this model of regulating. Or, it, nothing's perfect, but it's getting much closer and more refined every every quarter in what regulations should look like for this industry. And we'll see states replicating those templates of regulation to new states. And that will, you know, just continue to increase the momentum that all of this progress is happening for the cannabis space. How year. do our investors reach out to you, to you? This has been a great conversation today. Sure. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Uh, best way to reach out to LeafLink if you're a cannabis firm would be to an email to sales at leaflink.com if you're an investor advisor or just want to talk on the space info at leaflink.com is, is a great place to send tickets to and we get back to everything typically in you know a few hours so happy to connect on those two points great ryan thanks for being a guest on the show thanks so much michael you're welcome ryan smith co-founder and chief executive officer leaflink Dot com. We're going to go to a break right now on the other side of this break. We're going to come back with Rory Kutaya, CEO of Infuse, and a segment brought to you by TheVitaminPatch.com. We'll be right back. <laughs> 